and the gravity that by swearing by other than Allah is something that is tremendously dangerous. Naam. And we have to understand this, especially being that from the culture that we're from, where people are given to swearing by other than Allah and it becomes natural and easy to them. How this is something that the children, they learn from when they're on the playground to swear by other than Allah. Naam, whether it be swearing by their mothers or their fathers or their grandmothers or grandfathers or so on and so forth. Naam, people become accustomed to doing this. They say something and to ascertain whether or not it is truthful, then the other children will tell them, swear by so-and-so from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so as to confirm the validity and the truthfulness of what you're saying. So the children learn from a very young age, from these kuffar, from these kuffar children, they learn what? They learn polytheism, they learn shirk. And this is why we have to be seriously, seriously reconsider sending our children to public schools. For those who send their children to public schools, this is something that I urge you to seriously reconsider. Because despite what you may think you are gaining from having your child go and receive such education in such a particular place, you don't know all of the dangers that your child are going to be exposed to, if not from the teachers, from the other pupils, from the students. You don't know the danger that your children are going to be exposed to. And the reality of it is, is that some of these dangers are not dangers in which your child may even perceive as being dangerous. So they may not mention them to you. They may not tell you anything about it. They may not inform you anything about any um these things that they are coming across, so on and so forth, in the likes of these classes. So this is just something for us to think about and to contemplate on, bithnilahi ta'ala, because bila shakku bila raib, we have to put the protection of our children and make it an utmost uh, priority as parents. Ala kulli hal. The, the shaykh, hadallahu ta'ala, he goes on and he says, وَقَدْ بَلُغَ الْأَمْرُ في خطورته عند من يعني عند من دخول الطرق نعم دخول الطرق المنحرفة والإغال في التعظيم الأولياء والغلو فيهم he says and this affair becomes even more dangerous يعني عند من دخل for the one who he enter into these different orders, right? These different astray orders and groups of individuals who commit all types of extremism in, in their veneration of their awliya. And they, are, and they go to the extremes and are excessive in their praise and overpraise and veneration of their awliya, of their so-called saints. To the extent that you will find that some of them, either Hulifa bin Wali, that some of them, if they swear by one of their saints, la yahlifu illa sadiqan, they will only swear in the name of their saint to something that is true. Wa ida halaf, wa ida halafa billah, la yubali. But if they make an, or if they swear by Allah, they pay no attention to it. Meaning that what? That they'll swear by Allah to something that is false. Naam. They'll swear by Allah to something that is untrue. But when it comes to their awliya, they only swear in their name to something that is true. Naam? They will never swear in the name of their wali to something that is wrong, something that is false. But when it comes to swearing by Allah, whether it's true, whether it's false, they don't pay no attention, they have no concern for them. Naam? Hatta law kana kaadiban fa innahu yahlif. Even if it is incorrect, even if it is a lie, they will still swear by other than Allah. Wa'iyadu billah. وَمِنْ شِدَّةِ مَنْ قَامَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِنْ تَعْظِيمٍ لِلْوَلِي And this is because of the exaggeration and the strength that this person has in his heart for venerating this particular saint or his saint. Naam? For this person and the, vener the veneration he has of his saint, that he will never swear by something that is false in the name of his saint, but he'll swear by something that is false in the name of Allah or by Allah to the something that is false. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ and it's important for you to understand because it is possible, it is possible, like was aforementioned in Riyadh and the like, it is possible that 
swearing by other than Allah could move from being shirk al-asghar and turn in to shirk al-akbar. It's possible. It's possible that it can become shirk al-akbar. Because the reality is that no one is going to reach major shirk without first going through minor shirk. So the way the shaitan is going to get you to make major shirk is the what is to get you accustomed to minor shirk and then he'll get you to do the major shirk and you have to understand that the shaitan his plot he doesn't he doesn't come you know with the end of the plot in the beginning but rather he builds you up he or rather we should say he breaks you down he breaks you down until now he gets you to totally destroy yourselves so this is something that we have to understand so the shaykh he mentions he says well هذا الشرك الأصغر فيكون الشركا أكبر ناقلا من الملة وعياذ بالله. He said that the minor shirk it could magnify and increase until it becomes major shirk, the type of which will expel a person from the religion, and with يعني Allah's aid is sought from that. وإذا عذم المحلوف به تعظيما أشد من تعظيم الله. He said, and this is when the person who yani, is making this, the person who is uh, yani, swearing, the thing that they swear swearing by, they venerate it more than they venerate Allah. They venerate it more than they venerate Allah. Naam. Aw ta'zeeman musawiyan li ta'zeemillah. Or they venerate it like they venerate Allah. So either they venerate it more than they venerate Allah, like these extreme grave worshipping individuals from the Sufiya who they will swear by Allah to something that is true and they will swear by Allah to something that is false but when it comes to their awliya no they will never swear yani, to, by their awliya to something that is false they only swear uh, by their awliya to something that is true so these are like these individuals they are those who have more veneration for their awliya than they have for Allah Naam, they have more reverence for their awliya than they have for Allah. So in that type of situation, now the swearing by other than Allah turns from shirk al-asghar, from minor shirk, into what? Into major shirk. Into major shirk. Naam, wa billah. Naam, Allah The Shaykh goes on to mention... Another example of minor shirk, and that is, yani, well, قول, this is what Imam bin Baz, rahmatullah alayhi, mentions. He says, well, قول, ما شاء الله وشاء فلان. And the statement, Allah has willed and so-and-so has willed. Naam? By the will of Allah and the will of so-and-so. فقد uh, Abdul Razak he mentions فَقَدْ حَذَّرَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ But the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he warned against this لَمَّا سَمِعَ رَجُلًا يَقُولُ When he heard a man saying مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَشِئْتْ As Allah willed and you willed فَقَالَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَجْعَلْتَنِي وَاللَّهِ عَدْلَ Have you made me equal with Allah? أو يعني, uh, in, in another Niddan, in another narration, it comes Niddan, Aja'antani lillah, Niddan, have you made me with Allah a rival? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi instructed him, Qul, Allah wahda, then say, as Allah wills only. That's it, just say, as Allah wills only. Don't add, and so and so, and you, and this, no, as Allah wills only. Well, and this is because the well in the Arabic language, so that you understand, right? This is because the well in the Arabic language, mutlaqa al musawa, then. And he, in general, it makes all things equal. Naam, in general, it makes all things equal. The well, it makes all things equal. There is no um, there is no order that is understood from it. As opposed to bi khilaf thumma. Naam, thumma, you understand in order. So if I said, Dakhla Muhammad, thumma Ali. If I said Muhammad came in and then Ali, then we understood that what? That Ali came in before Muhammad. But if I said Dakhla, Dakhla, Muhammad, wa Ali, if I said Muhammad, wa Ali, they came in, then you don't understand that there was an order. Muhammad could have came in first, then Ali. Or Ali could have came in first, then Muhammad. Or they could have stepped through the door at the same time. 
you don't it doesn't give you yani you don't understand from it any type of order when you use well well does not give you an understanding of any type of order whereas thumma it gives you an understanding of an order that this happens and then after it the other thing happens dakhala muhammad thumma ali muhammad came in then ali that makes sense طيب so when a person says allah wills by yani it was as allah and you wills then they're making it equal with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa iyadhu billah as opposed to when the shaykh he mentions he brings a benefit he said walo qal ma sha allah thumma fulan if a person says that it was as allah willed then someone else the shaykh he says fala haraj then there is no problem with this it is as allah willed then somebody else now then so and so he said this is no this is no problem because we know that no will will supersede the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all wills will follow the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma tashauna illa in yasha Allah and they will not have willed it except that Allah already willed it naam so no will will supersede the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but all wills follow the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why in this particular construction why li anna thumma tufidu tarakhi because thumma you understand from it at tarakhi meaning that there is an order there is a descending order that this thing happened first then the other thing happened and so on and so forth naam طيب وقال رحم الله تعالى and then Sheikh bin Baz رحم الله تعالى he says ونحو ذلك and other than that نعم أي من هذه الألفاظ other than that from other statements that also will meet this criterion and fall into shirk al-asghar فقد جاء عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما because there comes a narration on ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما في قول الله تعالى إن إن الله تعالى statement فلا ت فلا تجعلوا لله أندادا وأنتم تعلمون and do not set up rivals with Allah and you know do not set up rivals with Allah and you know better نعم أي he mentions in the explanation of this ayah from سورة البقرة in this ayah twenty two الأنداد هو شرك that أنداد it is شرك نعم يعني أخفى من دبيب النمل في في على صفات سوداء في ظلمة الليل that it is that which is more hidden than the moving ant the moving ant that is on a black smooth rock that is on a black rock in a dark night in a dark night that is harder to see is harder to perceive so it's very easy that people will fall into it which would inshallah uh, will come to see more about this and to get more into depth as relates to this but for now but for now ibn abbas of the allah and whom he mentions he says well who and yaqul and it is that a person will say wallahi wa hayatik they will say by allah and by your life ya fulan by Allah and by your life, O Fulan. Naam. Wa hayati and by my life. Naam. They will swear by their by their lives. Naam. Or they will say, Oh, Yaqul Lona Kelbu Hava La Atana Lusus. Or they will say, if it wasn't for this dog of mine, the the burglars, the robbers were the king. If it wasn't for this dog, the robbers were the king. The thieves would have come. Naam. I want you to reflect on this now nah? because this is stuff very easy to fall into. How many people say things like that? It wasn't for the low jack, they would have they would have robbed my car. It wasn't for the alarm system, they would have robbed my car. It wasn't for the camera, they would have broke in. Subhanallah, really? No, it's all by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just something like you now said like this, a person may not even think too much about his statement, they will have fallen into shirk. And this is why he described that he described it. It is like that black ant that's crawling, not that black ant crawling on a black rock in the yani uh, uh, in, in, a, in a, an extremely dark night. So in other words, understand this, right? If I were to tell you, I want you to find the black ant, so you understand better, yani uh, this statement in this phrase. If I were to tell you, I want you to find the black ant, okay? But now the black ant is going to be on a black rock 
Okay? And it's going to be on a night that's a moonless night. Right? Cloud cover, moonless night, no light. So it's hard to find. And what makes it even more harder to find is that what? Is that the ant is not stationary. It keeps moving. It's not, it's not in one spot. Because see, if it's in one spot, maybe with time, you know, you might be able to find it. Your eyes adjust a little bit. And then, okay, here we go. But no, it's, it's moving. It's moving constantly. So it's very hard to identify. It's very hard to, you know, to, to narrow down on when it's moving like this. And, and likewise, is the likes of this, of this shirk is that it's very hard. It's very hard. And an individual has to know their aqidah well. They have to know their aqidah well so that they benefit. Now, so that they benefit. Now, but also, I want you to, I want you, I want you to reflect because there is a statement that comes in the Western culture that enters into this and is of extreme danger. Right, enters into this and it's from extreme danger. It's when a person will say to a parent that they have given their child such and such a characteristics. You ever hear that before? Where well, they will say, you know, uh, this is what their mother gave them, right? Or this is what their father gave them. This is what they got from this. The reality of it is, is that who creates us? Who shapes us and forms us in the womb? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did your mother or your father have anything to do with yani, how you were shaped, what sex you were, the complexion of your skin, the texture of your hair, that, you know, anything like this? No, they have none of that. They have none of that. <clears throat> you understand? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created you and who has shaped you and who has fastened you, so on, uh, yani fastened you, so on and so forth. So it's important for us to understand the likes of these things and that we do not attribute yani, things to others that should be rightfully attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fact that the robbers didn't come, it was by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because no dog was there. You understand? Not because no dog was there. Although having the this the uh, uh, you know security dog is from the means, having an alarm system, nah, that's from the means. But we understand the means are just the means. They are not the they are not the fruition of that particular uh, uh, endeavor, but rather the tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the success that something comes to fruition or not, yeah, or that it comes to fruition, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it doesn't come to fruition, this is by Allah ta'ala's decree. Everything is by qadr. Naam, طيب. Also, the statement, لَوْ لَلْبَطَّ فِي الدَّارِ لَأَتَانَ الْلُصُوصِ If it wasn't for the بَطَّ And the بَطْ is, you know, it's the duck, right? It's a duck or a goose or whatever, right? This is the بَطْ so they say if it wasn't for the bulk in the dar, then the robbers would have come. So the people, yani, you may say, well, what does that mean? Because it's, it's something inside the house that makes noise. It's something inside the house that makes noise. Perhaps people would uh, think someone is home because something's moving around. Maybe it's making this duck noise or what have you. So it would give the impression somebody's home. So robbers, they like easy targets, so they skip it. Now, was it because the buck was in the house? No, I mean, it was by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having the, uh, the, the, the duck there, yeah, it's just from taking the means. It's like people when they leave, they leave the light, they leave a light on or something like this to give the impression someone is home. But that's just from what? Taking the means. Because how many places have gotten robbed that had guard dogs? How many places have gotten robbed that left the light on? How many places have gotten robbed that had sophisticated security systems? The reality of it is, is that if Allah has written that this is going to happen, it's going to happen. That's it. If Allah has not written that it, that it for it to happen, it's not going to happen. Allah can, wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Whatever Allah wills is, whatever He does not will, then it is not. You understand? So everything is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never understand or think that it is the means with them within themselves that bring about or do anything. The means with and by themselves do nothing. Outside of, we have to establish what is wajib in doing the means. But whether something comes to fruition or not, all of that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It's important for the mu'min to reinforce themselves with this, with this reality and to teach their children this because this is of extreme importance. This is a life lesson that they need in order to be successful. And then he also mentioned, he says, وَقَوْلُ الرَّجُلُ لِصَاحِمِهِ And the statement of a man to his companion, MashaAllah wa shit. As you and Allah willed. A'udhu billah. Naam. Wa qawlu rajul And a person saying, Lawla Allah wa fulan. If it wasn't for Allah and so and so. La taj'al fiha fulan. Don't add fulan to it. 
Ma'am, if it wasn't for Allah and so-and-so, don't add so-and-so to it. Why? Because in reality, so-and-so had nothing to do with it. Whether they were there or not there, if Allah had willed it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Whether they were there and Allah willed it's not going to happen, you know what's going to happen? It's not going to happen. You understand? So don't add Fulan. Fulan has nothing to do with anything. Why? Hada kulluhu min shirk. All of this is from shirk. All of this, it is from shirk. Naam. So it is incumbent that me fortify and reinforce ourselves in our aqidah and our beliefs because the aqidah is from that which will shape the whole of our lives. And then the Shaykh, Rahimullah uh, Ta'ala, he goes on to mention more about this section. But inshallah Ta'ala, we will save that until the next class. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا